celebrate your presence here today. It is hard to imagine that Constance could have foreseen a day like today with all of these women from all over the world celebrating the pioneering steps that she took. And so today we celebrate the legacy of Constance. We thank God for her courage to be the first. Today there are still many churches who have still yet, uh, not yet embarrassed the ordination of women. Well, however, I am pleased to say that the Council for World Mission is committed to gender justice, to equal participation of women and men, and indeed to the ordination of women. Unfurl your ribbons, remember those women, and celebrate them by waving your ribbons in the final verse. But let us, let us stand and let us sing. out of the spirit on all flesh, that like Constance Coltman, we might be able to break the mold when we need to. Give us discernment to question the wisdom of the world, and give us the courage to challenge that which needs to be changed. I can remember the moment when kneeling at the communion rail at my local parish church, I first felt a call to ministry. It was strong and beautiful, but it took a while for the truth to dawn on me that I had never seen a woman's hands break the bread at communion or heard a woman's voice preach the sermon and that even the choir at my church was men and boys. At school, I said I wanted to be a minister and they told me to study Latin. <laughs> At church, and by now I'd found a United Reformed Church, they told me that there were women who were ministers, though I never saw one there. And they took me in. The college put full-length mirrors in the rooms of the new women students. And I learned at last the story of Constance Todd, who became Coltman, and I met women who were ordained to the ministry of word and sacrament. I'm sure that many of you can think of times when you were the first. And I can remember moments when I've realized that however much you don't want to think about it again, but just get on with whatever the job or the ministry is, your being the first is really important for someone. These stories of being the first did not end a hundred years ago, and they still happen today, and in some places they have yet to happen. Even if we get used to being and having women who are ministers, it's often still a first in some places and for some people. And so Constance's story is echoed in ours. And shall we sing Alan Gaunt's wonderful hymn, written for this day? Thank you. 